In this video, we're going to look at the Tehe Kiln, also known as Old Kin Iwashita in Mashiko. As I've talked about before, Mashiko's modern ceramic industry started in the 1850s when suitable clay was discovered. Iwashita Sito applied to the Otawara clan to allow him to build a kiln at this location and start producing pottery in 1866. This was still the Edo period, so you needed such permission. His son, Tehe, joined him in making pottery in the Meiji period. In 1893, the kiln here, the Eastern Kiln, was built. This is the oldest remaining climbing kiln in Mashiko. Originally, it had 13 chambers, but now it has 8. The Western Kiln, in turn, was built in 1918 also by Tehe. It has a larger entrance and was designed to fire daily use ceramics in bulk. So just huge numbers of ceramics could be fired in this kiln. There were 11 chambers, but after the restoration in 1853, there are 10. It is the largest existing climbing kiln in Kanto. So it was big. Like I said, it was used for firing in bulk. Now, using these climbing kilns was labor intensive. They are heated by wood. So first, it actually took you multiple days to even heat up the kiln. So it took generally two to three days of starting a fire, burning it, heating up the kiln to get it hot enough to fire. So it would take at least four people. So two teams of two. Although I'm sure a lot of times they like to have more people so people could take a break or there was, you know, more hands to do the same amount of work. The pottery in the chambers closest to the fire would actually get exposed to quite a bit of ash. I think Lillian likes that word. Uh, ash would also get on the vessels and the ceramics in the second and third chamber, too. Sometimes the second and third chamber would actually have the most interesting patterns of the ash becoming glaze. And so sometimes the pottery from the second and third is actually the most valuable. The first is expensive, the second's expensive, the third's a little less expensive, and then the next ones, they don't get the, uh, the ash on there, the ash doesn't become a glaze, and they're generally a little cheaper. Although there's a lot of other factors that go into the price of ceramics. So that is just one little thing about traditional ceramics that can affect the price. I hope that you enjoyed this video. It's just a quick, fun look at a kiln. Um, it's open. It's a historical site. You can go in. The uh, owner, the I think he's the fifth generation. Uh, he actually speaks a bit of English and was very nice about giving a tour. They have a shop there. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you could go down to the comment section, tell me what you think. And, of course, give me a like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.